is the spiritual sabbath of a christian believer the spiritual sabbath of a christian believer and i will be i mean uh, taking those portions from hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 um, hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 uh, makes us uh, uh, different different i mean uh, understanding about the sabbath and all those things the rest or sabbath or something now we are going to look into those i mean portions and you know uh, the reason that i i mean uh, was desiring to take this portion is uh, you know we know that uh, today the world is restless world right the world is restless world it means so there is no rest and there is no peace in any of the continent any of the area of this world any of the countries of this world but we know that we are getting peace and we are getting rest and we are getting the answer for our prayers only in the presence of god do you believe that we get the peace and we get the rest and we get the blessings only from the presence of God. So that's the reason in this restless world, I mean, we are finding the presence of God. We are finding the rest. We are finding the peace, the finding the happiness in the presence of God and in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ that's the reason that I would like to share with you about this I mean as an introduction you know the word Sabbath the word Sabbath the Hebrew word for Sabbath is I mean sh Shabbat okay Shabbat is the Hebrew word for Sabbath in the in the Bible in English and the meaning of that word Hebrew word Shabbat is uh, to cease or working or to rest okay to cease or uh, to, to cease working and to rest okay that's the that's a simple meaning of the word sabbath I, I i request everyone to be concentrated here when i'm sharing about this particular portion that we have to understand that then only we will be receiving the peace and the rest i mean uh, from the lord in christ i mean in this uh, restless world i mean so um you know uh, you know which is the first verse that you can see in the bible about the sabbath the word sabbath what is the first verse or in, in which book? Genesis. In the book of Genesis? It is there? No. Yeah. Uh, in the book of Genesis? The word Sabbath? The word Sabbath. The word Sabbath. I know that uh, the rest is there in Genesis, but the word Sabbath is in the book of Exodus. Exodus, Leviticus. Deuteronomy everywhere it is there but in Exodus chapter 16 verse 23 you can see there while God was giving the regulations to Israel about gathering the daily manna okay daily manna Worship which would at the Paul, I wrote a parade in the Kaira till you parade in the Kaira man and the Yanap. Eh? Eat there was some Shabbat, there was some Ningala, either Perkano or Dundakan on the Pog, the Ningal and the Yanap. Rested a canon. So, okay, so we'll come to that point. So, in Exodus chapter 16, verse 23, you can see the first word Sabbath, and that is related to the regulation when God was giving to the people of Israel about gathering the daily manna. And in after that, in chapter 20, in chapter 20, you can see there where God gave the gave the I mean, Ten Commandments. Man. So when God was giving the Ten Commandments, when God was saying them that remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. And first of all, you have to understand why don't we observe the Sabbath literally? Why the New Testament believers, you and me, are not observing the Sabbath, the day of Sabbath, literally? You know that we are, we, we are, we are doing that in a spiritual way, but why we are not observing the Sabbath in literally as the people of Israel were doing? Anything? 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 
പുള്ളി എന്റെ കണ്ണു പിടിക്കാൻ അറിയത്തില്ല നിങ്ങൾ മിണ്ടുന്നില്ല Jesus proved that's right Jesus proved it is unrealistic that means it is it is you know yeah yeah Jesus just meant saying that okay so we should not i mean do that observe that sabbath and, and because there is a there is a there is a meaning in it and and the other thing the other answer it is only for the people of israel okay it was given only for the people of israel to observe the sabbath literally okay at the same time when you read the new testament we understand jesus fast that opposite to the observation of the sabbath and he was saying no 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 this is not the literally and this is not i mean you have to i mean uh, observe the sabbath uh, literally but there is a there is, it's a shadow it's a shadow of many things okay in the new testament it's a shadow of many things and uh, we will be looking into that uh, i mean maybe later so when we come back to hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 we are not reading all those verses now because of the lack of time but we will be reading one by one i mean when we i mean move on okay so so hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and uh, that reminds us about the three different sabbaths and the rest from the old testament okay so from the old testament you can understand and the author of the book of i mean hebrews he is writing that that there are specifically written about three kinds of rest or three kinds of sabbath in the in the old testament the first thing is in verse 4 okay hebrews chapter 4 verse 4 it says that the personal sabbath of the lord god in genesis chapter 2 the god after completing his creation work he rested on the seventh day right okay so this is the first thing that i mean you can see in the I mean book of uh, I mean Hebrews chapter 4 that it's a personal sabbath of a lord Jesus the lord god in Genesis chapter 2 Okay so there you can see that after completing his creation work he was taking rest on the seventh day he was taking rest on the seventh day and again in the second i mean uh, portion second sabbath you can see that is the national sabbath observation of people of israel that you can see in the book of exodus chapter 20 verses 8 and 9 and that observation of israel is in exodus and it is related to the 10 commandments okay so when god was giving uh, the 10 commandments to the uh, people of israel god was saying that you have to keep the seventh day as a holy day that means the resting day okay so we will come to that point later and again and uh, the third third sabbath which you can see is in deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 20 okay deuteronomy chapter i mean if you want to i mean take down all these points you can take it down okay so you're simply sitting there and just watching okay what is going to happen here the word pastor is going to say about sabbath or something just just take it down okay this is a it's a good practice that take note it down okay so then you will be able to look into the, those points maybe later okay there are there are some people who are already doing that okay thank you for that and it's it's a good i mean habit and good practice to do that okay the, the last one is the canaan rest of i mean people of israel the canaan rest of the people of i mean israel that is from the deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 20 okay and um, you know uh, uh, why he is talking about the old testament sabbath in the new testament why the writer of the book of hebrews the writer of the book of hebrews i believe that it is apostle paul and there are many i mean debates on that but i mean i concluded that it is uh, written by apostle paul so by apostle paul is reminding uh, the people, people of uh, i mean uh, new testament uh, or the hebrews people uh, to to understand i mean what is the importance of the sabbath in the old testament okay so he was trying to i mean teach them what is the importance and spiritual rest that a believer can have in jesus christ hallelujah so we can have a rest a completely a rest in the presence of god in jesus christ that's what we are reading in chapter 4 verses 9 to 11 
okay and first of all let us see the importance of Old Testament Sabbath then we will we will come back to the New Testament and uh, uh, we will I mean see how the New Testament believers I mean can experience the spiritual rest in their life you know I mean which is the uh, uh, Christian group now uh, they are still um, observing the Sabbath Seventh day Adventists, Sabbath. Okay. Seventh day Adventists, they are observing still the, the Sabbath and they are worshipping on Saturday. Okay. So is there any 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 wrong if you worship on Saturday? No? Then why we are not a, a man worshipping on Saturday? This is the law this is the day that the Lord has made. Which day? Sunday? <laughs> okay, you know, there's a confusion between the people, you know, in among the people. And uh, some people are saying that okay, uh, the Lord Himself has uh, I mean, made sanctified uh, the the Saturday as a as a holy day or as a as a resting day, and uh, a Saturday is the worship day. Okay, and uh, some people are saying that okay, this is the first day of the uh, Sunday is the first day of the of the week, and we should uh, I mean worship the Lord on Sunday, hmm? which is the first day of the week. Uh, which is the first day of the week? Monday. Sunday or Monday? Monday. Sunday? Monday? I don't know. <laughs> so the people are thinking that okay, uh, we should only worship God on Sunday because you know this is th this is written in the Bible. Is there anything is written about that? You know, uh, we should only I mean worship the Lord on Sunday. It is not written, no? It is not written. You know? Adi Bidakan Mar, in the Edu. Aichavatatinde, Unandi Vasum, in the Edu. Upon the Rukuan Kudi Vanuna, Bible Vikin, Ale, Aichavatatinde, Unandi Vasum, part account of the number of Badar under Lole. Abum, Anganavarianagil, first day Edana, Sunday Anna, the Ken Namala, I radi Kin of the Kund, Namala, I radi Kin of the Kunda, the Sunday Akin of the Mati. Okay, but at the same time, we have to understand actually the first day of the week is Monday. First day of the week is Monday. And actually, the, according to the calendar, you know, uh, God was taking rest on <laughs> God was taking rest on Saturday or Sunday. Ay, ay, yo. Yes, no, yo. Huh? Seventh day is Saturday or Sunday? Fully can be confused. Huh? Okay, anyway, anyway, leave it. Okay, so, you know, we have to understand one thing. You know, uh, God was uh, taking rest on the seventh day. It is written seventh day. Okay, so that is the last day. That's the last day. Okay, so according to our calculation, the first day, if the first day is Monday, then the last day is Sunday. Okay, but you know, uh, where, when the, 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 the people in the, the believers in the Gulf countries, they are worshipping God? Why? They have only one day holiday on Friday. They are worshipping there. Okay, and we have holiday on Saturday, Sunday. We are worshiping God on Sunday. And if you are worshiping on Saturday also, there is no problem if it is convenient for you. Amen. So it is not clearly written that you have to worship, you have to gather together only on Sunday. But Bible says that any day you can gather together, any day you can worship the Lord. Hallelujah. That is not our point. We are coming to the point. The first thing that we have to understand that I mean, God Himself was taking as a personal Sabbath of the Lord God that we are reading in Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Let's read that verse. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah. Okay, so this is the this is the personal Sabbath of the Lord God that we can understand that after completing His creation work, He rested on the seventh day. 
that do you think that god was tired or i mean i mean uh, he was some I mean, very much worried about uh, i mean restless i mean after uh, the creation work that's the reason that he was taking rest on seventh day do you believe that no no it's there you know you cannot believe that god was weary and god was tired after doing the creation work i mean so and and you know there are some people that uh, may be believing that okay it was that i mean god was so tired and uh, god was doing all the creation work for i mean uh, six days and working that and creating that creating that what god did he was not making all those things for six six days but he was just i mean uttering a word let it be that's it let it be I mean, so we can believe that god was making all those things and creating all those things and it was not a big task for god to create all these things it is very easy for him even in isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 we read that our lord the creator of the ends of the earth never become weary or tired hallelujah so this is the belief of a if, of, of a believer that our god who is the creator of the ends of the earth never become weary or tired hallelujah but i think it was god's expression of satisfaction celebration renewal and the refreshment hallelujah you know the reason that god was taking rest on the seventh day shows that it was an expression of god's satisfaction you know he was just thinking oh i could make all these things i mean whatever i see, i see in this world in the universe I mean, it's a great thing that i did all these things and it's a it's a satisfaction okay nammal malayalathil parayanam endha parayan pattum hmm oru ദീർഘശ്വാസം വിട്ടുകൊണ്ട് നോക്കി നിൽക്കുകയാണ് എന്താണെന്നറിയാമോ ഈ ഇത്രേ സംഭവങ്ങളൊക്കെ ഞാൻ സൃഷ്ടിച്ചല്ലോന്ന് ഓർത്ത് ഒരു സാറ്റിസ്ഫാക്ഷൻ ആണ് ഒരു സംതൃപ്തിയോട് കൂടെ അവൻ്റെ ഒരു പെർഫെക്ഷനിലേക്ക് വന്നതിൻ്റെ ഒരു സംതൃപ്തിയോട് കൂടെ അവൻ ദൈവത്തെ അവൻ നമുക്ക് അവിടെ കാണുവാൻ തക്ക വണ്ണം കഴിയുന്നുണ്ട് ഹലലൂയ്യ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ സെലിബ്രേഷൻ after creating all these things taking rest on one day and saying that okay i would like to celebrate the creation and also i mean it's a renewal it's a renewal because right after that god is going to make the human right and just before that god was thinking okay just take a break before making the human just i will take a break before making human and thus far i was creating all these things and now i am going to, to to make the human being so i should take a break there and also it's a it's a, it's a kind of refreshment it's a kind of refreshment and god was taking a refreshment before making the human because he was going to make the human being in his own image, image. the all other things look at all the other things i mean that doesn't have the image of god right the animals doesn't have the image of god i mean the things which you can see in this world I mean, doesn't have the image of god or likeness of god but only the human being is created or made by god in his own image and in his own likeness and also you know when you read genesis chapter 1 verse 31 on verse maybe um, i mean uh, genesis chapter 1 verse uh, 31 to chapter 2 verse 3 you will understand that i mean this is the reason that these are the reasons that you can see that why i mean god was so satisfied and why god was expressing his satisfaction and his uh, i mean refreshment and his i mean celebration and his i mean renewal because you can see there first of all he was looking at all all that he had made in 6 days okay in in that portion you can see that uh, uh, genesis chapter 1 verses 31 to chapter 2 verse 3 okay what is that he was looking at all that he had made in 6 days and he found everything he made is very good he found everything that he made is very good he found the creation work is completed he found the creation work is completed he blessed the seventh day he blessed the seventh day and he sanctified the seventh day that means he set apart he set apart for a special purpose setting apart 
or sanctifying that means making separate a day for doing something else okay or taking rest okay so we'll come to that point and he rested on the seventh day and also he was so satisfied on all those things that this is the reason that we can say that when God was so satisfied by making all these creations and creatures amen so for God I mean Sabbath I mean uh, you know uh, uh, usually we can see that you know uh, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes you know we take rest or we take a nap or we take a break after a busy I mean uh, week right huh? do you take do you take a rest or do you take a I mean nap after the busiest day I mean days of the week no oh my god only on Sunday. You know, some people are not coming to the church also, they are taking nap at home. <laughs> some people are taking rest at home because Pastor, what you are thinking? You know, Monday through I mean Monday through, I mean Friday we were working or Saturday we were working, Sunday, only one day we are getting we will be at home and we will be taking rest or we'll be taking a nap. <laughs> Even on Sunday also coming here and taking nap, the people sometimes. <laughs> They think that, you know, they think that, okay, oh, this is the day that eh, we should take rest because God has taken the rest. <laughs> you know, some people are coming to the church also, sitting there and simply orangwa. In the other when they are thinking that, okay, this is the day for rest. Amen. Hallelujah. But, you know, it, it was not a difficult task for God to take rest maybe after, I mean, doing all this creation work. But I believe that when God was take, I mean, thinking about what all the things that I created. And he was thinking that, okay, I am so satisfied. Because everything is good. Everything is good. When one thing is not good, what do you say? What do you say? Many all all other things, you know, God was saying, okay, this is very good, this is very good, this is very good, this is very good. After after making man, he did not say this is very good because he was knowing that there are some troubles there are some problem that which uh, is which is going to happen uh, with a human being we will come to the point and so you know for god sabbath was a satisfaction sabbath was a celebration it was a refreshment and a renewal hallelujah and today let me tell you one thing that we are also supposed to find rest in the presence of god then we are supposed to find the presence of God, the rest. And we have to spend time to thank God for enabling us to reach thus far. Hallelujah. We have to thank God. Find time to thank God. You know, every day we are working. At the same time, at least one day. At least one day. Spend time in the presence of God. To thank God for all the blessings that you received. Thank God that God has enabled you to, to, to do all these things. Hallelujah. You know, at least one day, come to the church and, uh, I mean, gather together, have a fellowship together, I and mean, together praise the name of the Lord for what you have received from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And take it as a celebration, celebration, the things that we do by the strength of our God. Hallelujah. So when we are gathering together, we are celebrating. We are celebrating the works that we have done only because of the strength of God. It's not only I mean, because of your strength that you have done all these things. But it is only because of the strength of God. The Lord has strengthened you to do all those things. And also make a refreshment, a renewal ourselves for doing many things in the days to come. I mean, so you can use the day of Sabbath. Whichever it may be, the day whichever it may be, the day of Sabbath or the worship day, you can make it as a, I mean, a renewal day or refreshment day, I mean, for doing many things in the days to come. Hallelujah. So you can understand that, you know, when we come to the presence of God, when we come to the church, we are, we are doing refreshment in our lives, right? We are renewing our life. 
We are renewing our life by singing songs and praying and listening the word of God. We are renewing our spirit. Hallelujah. We are renewing our strength, right? We are renewing our strength. I mean, that's the reason I told you that we can also take a day of break and praising God, thanking God, renewing ourselves and refreshing ourselves. And that is the best thing that we can understand from the I mean, word of God. Now, let us go to the I mean, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. The next slide. I'll be, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. You can understand. Okay, can you read that verse maybe? Verse 9. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. <clears throat> okay, here, I mean, the author of this, uh, I mean, book of Hebrews, he is reminding us about next Sabbath or the next rest. What is that? The national Sabbath observation of Israel, and that is an ex book of Exodus, which is related to the Ten Commandments. Okay, we are coming to the second point, and I know that I'll be having time to explain about the second, only the second points, and the third point, and uh, and, and also from the I mean, New Testament, uh, I mean, uh, a concept about the Sabbath will be, I mean, explained in the next week. Okay, next Sunday. Okay, I know that, I mean, there will not be many of our families will be in, in India, I mean, maybe next Sunday, but still, I mean, you can join in, in, in Zoom to get the continuation of this message. Okay, okay, come back. You know, in the second section that, I mean, Apostle Paul is trying to remind us about the National Sabbath observation of Israel. Okay. And that is related to the Ten Commandments which was given to the people of Israel. As I told you in six, I mean, Exodus chapter 16 verse 23, that while God was giving the regulations to the people of Israel about giving, I mean, gathering the daily manna, he was talking about the Sabbath. And also after that in chapter 20, while he was giving the Ten Commandments I mean, to the people of Israel, he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay? What's the reason that God was saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? You know, you know, we, we understand that Jewish people, they already knew the importance of the Sabbath even before giving the Ten Commandments. That's what we read here. Okay? The people of Israel, the Jewish people, they were knowing about, they were knowing about already about the Sabbath keeping the Sabbath as a, as a resting day or worshipping day. Amen. It was known to them even before giving Ten Commandments. Amen. And also, when we think about the national Sabbath observation of the people of Israel, you have to think about many things from there that the Sabbath observation and its meaning. I'll be next. The Sabbath observation and the meaning. Okay, we are coming to the point. When, as we are the children of God, as we are the New Testament believers, we have to understand what is the meaning and why the people of Israel were, I mean, observing uh, uh, the Sabbath as a national observation. National observation. <laughs> the first point is, Sabbath is to remember and worship Creator. Read Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Okay. When a person is reading, all others can, I mean, very attentively sit, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, look into that portion and understand what is the meaning of that. Okay, read one of you can read Exodus chapter 20, uh, verses 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter. Nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in, uh, is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Okay, listen. You know, here, I mean, Apostle Paul is reminding them about the, the personal rest of God after the creation work. And again, he says that I mean, you are supposed to observe the Sabbath because when all these six days you were working and you were earning and you were bringing your first fruits and you are bringing all 
all the i mean i mean the things that you have earned for the six days and bringing everything in the presence of god and we are offering everything in the presence of god okay so worship here comes the worship you know worship is not only i mean clapping your hands and uh, i mean jumping or i mean singing songs or something but worship is a is a process of giving something to the lord you do believe that giving something to the lord when whatever it may be that you were working for six days right you were working for six days and you are coming to the presence of god on sunday and offer something in the offering bag you can do that you can do that because you have been working for six days and you have something with you and the material blessing that you receive from the lord and you have to give something for the name of the lord for the ministry of the lord for the church i mean offering or the tithe or something because god was i mean giving this observation to the people and he was saying you have to worship the lord it's a it's an expression of your worship and also remembering i mean the creator and remembering and worshiping the creator god hallelujah on the sabbath day the people of israel they were supposed to remember the creator god and they were supposed to worship the creator god hallelujah dear friends and dear families dear my brothers and sisters and children i mean this morning let me tell you one thing hallelujah you have an obligation to i mean remember your creator hallelujah you may be remembering many other things in your in your life i mean in your mind you are keeping many things but today i mean you are supposed to remember the creator god creator god remember the creator god and worship him alone hallelujah don't give your worship to any of this world i mean give only the worship only to the creator god hallelujah so they were increased by the word of god by the observation of the sabbath to remember the creator god and also to worship only the creator god and we will go to the next point that is the sabbath the sign and the covenant between israel and god exodus chapter 31 verses 12 and 13 Exodus chapter 31 verses 12 and 13 Then the Lord said to Moses, <coughs> to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Okay, Sabbath was a sign or covenant between God and the people of Israel. Today, you and God have and I and God between us I mean, there is a covenant there is a sign what is the sign and what is this covenant what is the covenant I will not leave from the word of God I will not leave the living God I will not leave the almighty God I will be worshiping the real faithful real creator God alone hallelujah Praise the Lord. What a tremendous that meaning that God has given I mean, I mean, uh, concerning the, the, the Sabbath. That we have a sign and we have a covenant with God. Hallelujah. That I mean, I will not go away from the presence of God. I will be always worshipping God alone. Again, the Sabbath is to remember their deliverance from Egypt. Deut when we read, uh, no need to read those verses because of the lack of time. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 37 and 38 when you read that you will understand the people of Israel they were in Egypt and they were in bondage. They were in exile time. You know so that you know they were just I mean, I mean again again and again crying in the presence of God and we understand that you know the people of God the people of God the people of Israel they were delivered from the bondages of the Egypt and Pharaoh. I mean so now when you are taking rest on one day and when you are gathering together for worshiping or sabbath or something the thing that you have to remember is how the lord has delivered you from the bondages of egypt hallelujah so today as we are the christians as we are the people of god as we are the saints of god i mean only one thing that we are remembering today that is i mean how the lord has delivered me from the bondages of sin how the i mean how the lord has delivered me from the bondages of satan and the world and the worldly pressures hallelujah because i am a child of god i mean we were singing that song right we were singing that song i am a child of god hallelujah once we were in the bondage and once we were i mean under the 
captivity of Satan and sin. Hallelujah. And today we are saying that I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Let us say that. Hallelujah. As a New Testament believer. Hallelujah. Remember, rest is a matter of worship by concentration and consecration. Rest or the Sabbath is reminding us about the concentration and consecration you know many of the people when they are coming for the worship service even though their body is here even though they are sitting there their mind is not here because they are not concentrated in the word of god they are not concentrated in the lord they are thinking about many other things Right? Even even now also, I can say that you know, many of you are thinking about many other things. You know, you left home and you are thinking, oh, I should did, did I did I close my door, open house, or did I I mean close the the main chatty arthu achi thunda na ke chindi chonda ngiri kiwa, amen? Le pucha yar thiliyo, hallelujah. Abey itak ke chindi chonda parap pere namarandi yena, satte wale jam parjo the. even though you are sitting in the presence of god even though you are sitting for the worship service but still you are thinking about many other things i mean what i can do after this service what i can do tomorrow or what i can do this evening all oh, these things are there and we are thinking that means there is no concentration where there is no concentration there is no consecration also hallelujah 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 if you were concentrated in the word of god if you were concentrated in the lord there is a consecration also what is the meaning of consecration consecration the action of making or declaring something typically at the church seat. that means it is sacred no we are making us holy again and again when we are sitting in the presence of god right but if you are concentrated to the word of god then you will be consecrating yourselves sanctifying yourselves then right? making holy and asking pardon for all our sins and all our curse shortcomings and asking lord forgive me a lord forgive me a lord cleanse me a lord right you know we are asking for the cleansing of our sins and our weakness i mean with the blood of jesus christ again and again if you are concentrated in the presence of god hallelujah because when I mean, free from all works and be consecrated and focus on worshiping god Hallelujah that's the reason for new testament believers sabbath is not an observation rather it's an experience do you believe that sabbath for the new testament believers is not at all an observation but it's an experience hallelujah experience to worship the living god experience to remember the creator god experience hallelujah i mean how we were i mean delivered from the bondages of sin and satan and we are worshiping god jumping together and i mean raising your hands and praise the name of the lord for, for for a moment hallelujah everybody everybody i mean praise the name of the lord for a while hallelujah thank you master thank you master thank you master hallelujah 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 and clap your hands together and praise the name of the Lord for a while hallelujah clap your hands and praise the name of the Lord thank you master thank you master thank you master hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god hallelujah thank you master thank you master thank you master thank you master oh we praise the name of god hallelujah father we remember your god hallelujah father god you are the creator of god I mean, you are the worship. I mean, I mean, I mean, main person that we can worship you, Lord. Hallelujah! Oh, we thank you, Master. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Master. Hallelujah! Children of God, you are not going to get the rest from this world, but God is going to give you the rest. Hallelujah! God Himself is going to give you the peace in this world. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This world is a restless world, but you can find the rest in the presence of God. you can find the peace in the presence of god you can find the happiness in the presence of god oh. hallelujah 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 you know the people of israel the jewish people they were thinking that okay if the the, the kings are coming and kings are ruling us i mean we will get the rest you know they were expecting the king you know that god himself was the king for the people of israel but the people were asking no god we need a king we need a king then god gave 
Saul. Saul as the first king. Amen. And again, you know, but Saul was a failure. The human leaders and human kings were failure. They proved that they are failures for, for the people of Israel. They were failure, and then David came and he was a failure. Solomon came, he was a failure, and Rehoboam came failure. And after that, while he while they were in the exile time, they were expecting, oh God, send somebody to lead us from the Egypt to Canaan. God sent Moses and Aaron and all those things and in different places, different times, God was sending the human kings and leaders and all those people. And these people were expecting, oh, these leaders will give us rest. These people will give us peace. Amen. So peaceful and restful. I mean, the, the rule is coming. But, I mean, they did not get it. Hallelujah. They did not get it. And now, they could understand that only through Messiah. Only through Messiah. Only through Jesus Christ we are going to get the complete and perfect rest. Hallelujah. We will, I mean, go to the third point, the other points, I mean, if possible, next week. Hallelujah. I'm going to close the, I mean, I mean, message today. Let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Let's remember, I mean, something that God has given to us. Hallelujah.